We'll start right there. So there we go. Three, two, and one. Well, Mary Katie, welcome back. Uh, Mary's Monday here at WSAU, WSAU.com. Uh, back in the office, uh, although again, it, things have been a, a little riskier these days with COVID-19, but we're still back here in the office. I guess we shouldn't say that because maybe we're not exactly setting the best example, but uh, things have somewhat slowed down here uh, community-wide. <laughs> it's It's been kind of boring lately for lack of a better term right yeah i mean i'm not hearing people complaining about it being boring but yeah this, <laughs> we were talking about what we should talk about here and i was like well we got budgeting and strategic planning and, and i don't know it seems like we took care of all the hot potatoes earlier this summer that's okay though <laughs> right that's okay. i think so I mean, the, the budget process, that's, this is your second one now. That's yeah. nothing to uh I'm feeling better about, about the budget process this time around. I mean, kind of understanding everything about it, well, as much as I, I can after a year and a half. But yeah. yeah, exactly. This is your second one. So just, I mean, give us an idea of uh, how much of a better grasp of this do you have. I mean, it's not like you were completely an outsider coming in. You still had a pretty good idea of what goes on, but once you really, as we like to say in government, see how the sausage is made, then things can get interesting. Are we still, are we dark now? No, we're, we're good. <laughs> we're good. We're good. Okay. We're just, again, budgeting. We're keeping the lights off yeah. for now because we Yes, need it's a little cheaper when we do that. Yes. Yeah, so I would say um, my first budget, you know, we were COVID. I was concerned about how much money we were going to lose from all of the, you know, anything from parking tickets to room tax, all that. So I would say that last budget was pretty conservative and actually the council added things into that budget. So, um, but we still saved eight cents on the mill rate, which was, which was a good thing. Um, this time around, you know, I'm kind of thinking about, oh my, I have to prioritize what I'm asking for because now I'm thinking a little bit differently about what, what our city hall needs, what our community needs. So, um, you know, holding myself back a bit, <laughs> but you know, we got through the CIP process already. So the council will have that to consider that CIP plan, a lot of projects in the works. Um, you know, there's a lot more funding available, grant funding, and you know, people wanting to help shore up our economy uh, after mm -hmm. COVID. Hopefully, after COVID, right? Right. Um, so, so that's kind of where we're at. You know, I'm also using this as an opportunity to hear from folks about ARPA funding, what you want to, what we want to do, um, and maybe that infrastructure funding. You know, we'll see um, if the house manages to pass something uh, that that will help us there too. So, yeah, I feel pretty good about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe maybe I have bigger wishes this year than I was thinking I had last year, though. <laughs> so what I'm hearing, though, is there's still a whole lot of unknowns with this because we don't know what's going to be happening in Washington over the next few weeks with infrastructure bills and, and things like yeah. that. Yeah, it's kind of a little it's a little bit of a different unknown, though. So instead of thinking, oh, man, what are we going to have to cut after the fact? It's more like, are we going to have to add projects? Are we, what are we going to do here with this funding? Are we going to have to change what we're doing here? You know, we're hearing a lot about how this infrastructure bill um, would, would prioritize certain kinds of projects, including green infrastructure. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about environmental justice here. Well, I mean, that talk's happening in Washington, too. So that'll be probably a hot topic uh, for everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I, I know one of the things that you were really taking a, a deep dive into was the lead service line replacement yep. as far as ARPA funding goes. Do you have any updates on whether the city's money could be used for that in the near yeah, future? Yeah, well, we definitely could use the city's uh, ARPA funding for that. That's an option. Um, you know, we came up with a plan uh, if we hired our own plumbers, um, which again, you know, these jobs are small and less likely to be taken right now. So we could hire our own plumbers to kind of deal with that. And that's a $3 million thing to get all of those lead service lines taken care of. Um, it's uh, marginally less expensive if we hire out, assuming we can get those contracted workers. Um, but, you know, we're, we're talking about what we should do here. It's interesting. I actually had the opportunity to talk to the I think it was the secretary, maybe the deputy secretary of Department of Health Services. They came to town to talk about lead, um, but they were talking about the lead in paint and windows. And we just had a project where we replaced all of that stuff. And I mean, that's seventy thousand dollars to get rid of all the lead in a house um, to make sure that people aren't getting sick and their kids aren't getting sick. So, you know, that's actually uh, a worse source of lead and more likely to harm people is in the paint um, than the water because mm -hmm. at least you can flush it out. But we want to get rid of it all. Um, mm -hmm. So we're continuing to look at that as an option. Obviously, looking at using funds towards a drinking water facility, we could borrow less. That's that's where I'm kind of headed. That's where my head is at. Um, mm -hmm. I'm interested in 
putting it towards the drinking water project um, and, and just borrowing less. And I think that will help all of us <laughs> with the rates. Right. So. And I know, I know that's one thing you've heard people all the time say they, they really don't like that surprise uh, yeah. every three months, yep. uh, all of a sudden saying, oh, my bills for this month are yep. a little higher than they have been. So I know that's something that, uh, in my mind at least, would be a great use of it because everybody in the city would benefit from that in one way or another. Yep, yep. And that's that's where my head is at. But, you know, there are other council members who are saying, well, actually, maybe people won't notice that. Maybe So I think that's a conversation we need to have publicly. I would love to hear from people. Um, we'll have another um, ARPA listening session on the 23rd of September. It will be virtual or in person. So if people are interested, uh, that stuff, that information is on our website. So feel mm -hmm. free to check that out and sign up and talk and tell us how you want us to spend your money. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I like the sound of that. Again, <laughs> a great listening session is something that uh, in the last year and a half you've really been uh, gung-ho about. We've had listening sessions regarding the environmental justice. We've had listening sessions regarding uh, a lot of other different topics. I just saw you at the solar listening session and there'll be another one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So it, it, everything has been really open and transparent here with the with your administration for the last uh, 18 months. And, and do you like the fact that I use the word administration there? <laughs> yes, you make it seem like it's more than just me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it, it's something that uh, I think that you, you're, you've had a really big focus on here for the last while. Yeah, and it's hard. You know, some people feel like they're still not heard. Um, and, you know, having these meetings, it, it's tough to get a time when people can show up. Um, so trying to have that in different ways, you know, you can call it, you can write, you can whatever it takes. So, you know, it's, it's hard, it's hard to get everyone. Um, but we want to do that. We want to do that in multiple languages. I've been on a Spanish language podcast a couple of times. So, um, definitely a slow process for me. Uh, <laughs> I, I speak French and not Spanish, so I can kind of understand it, but you know, mm -hmm. we're getting there. Yeah, exactly. So we'll we'll see where where these discussions go later yep. this month. Uh, yep. One thing that I know you're probably looking a little further ahead to now is uh, winter and the snow. People oh, yeah. don't want to hear about that right now, but it's not that Listen. far off. Uh, that's another that's another thing that uh, another aspect that impacts uh, not only the budget but uh, it also impacts mm -hmm. uh, a lot of other things too. Everything. Yeah. So we're ready. I'm I am not somebody that you will hear complaining about winter. Um, so I, I welcome the snow. <laughs> I, it's expensive with the salt and the clearing. Um, but you know, it's a big economic driver for our whole region. We were talking a little bit ahead of this and, mm -hmm. you know, we want people coming to Wasa for skiing and snowshoeing and, and curling and all of that stuff that happens in the winter. We want them paying our room taxes. We want to do all of that. So, um, I'm, I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> but, but. You may be ready, but is the street department ready? Is oh, the yeah, they, they're good. You know, they've been, they prep all year for this. You know, they spend the, they spend the summer on the roads and, you know, making sure that we're filling those potholes and, and building the roads and, and fixing mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, but then when we come around to the winter, they switch it up and there they go. <laughs> I was just talking to Lance over at the county. They're getting their stuff ready too. So uh, do you have any idea then, uh, is the salt ready to go? The <laughs> machines are all greased up. You've done all that yourself, right? <laughs> oh, all of it's done by me, right? <laughs> no, um, I would have to check in, but I'm sure, I know that you know we didn't use as much salt as we thought we would. Um, and actually maybe something fun for you if you felt like going doing a little field trip was checking out how they do this stuff at the Department of Public Works. They actually built some of their own machine, like gigs to to deal with the brining and stuff like that so they they make their own brine and uh it actually saves a ton of money um and it's more effective which is great mm -hmm. so. absolutely i i i would love to dive into a, a huge pile of sand or salt like that why not <laughs> all right well i'm gonna let eric know <laughs> we'll, we'll do that next we'll maybe do that uh on location that next month uh, you mentioned room tax uh, dollars in there as well. Uh, obviously, the Convention and Visitors Bureau's been. Uh, we talked about some of those hot topics that have kind of uh, boiled down. That yeah. one is certainly one that was extremely hot there for a while, but as you mentioned, it's kind of boiled down now. Yep. Uh, we're starting to see people come back into the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Uh, do you have an update on what Wausau's status is with that? Yeah, so uh, in, I don't know if it was in August or July, but we voted, uh, the Room Tax Commission, the Finance Commission, and then the City Council voted to um, agree to terms for a contract. And so we've 
we drafted the contract, we sent it over to the CVB, um, and they're kind of working it over to make sure that works for them. Um, I expect at some point here to hear uh, what's next. Um, there might be a little bit of negotiation taking place still, which we'll have to take back to council if it's substantially different, but um, I feel pretty optimistic about the direction we're going. Yeah, because uh, you mentioned a lot of those things that fill up the hotel rooms. Obviously, a lot of them didn't happen last year, but having an active Convention and Visitors Bureau to bring things in like that is obviously big, not just for the city, but, but for the region as well. The whole region, yeah. It's super important that we're talking tourism. You know, we um, are kind of the gateway to the north, right? I, I'm sure our, our northern mm -hmm. friends uh, consider themselves up north, but, you know, we, we are kind of where it starts for a lot of people. So we want to make sure we're doing our part to um, attract people, let them know what we're all about. And, you know, we have a lot of great amenities right here. Mm -hmm, indeed, and, and being able to market something like that yep. uh, is obviously Critical. big because, <laughs> you know, I, I'll even use myself for an example. I spent uh, a night in Minneapolis on my way back from vacation, and why did I do that? Well, the Minnesota Twins were there. Yep. Obviously, <laughs> uh, obviously didn't take me much convincing to <laughs> drop down the money on that ticket in that hotel room to do that. We don't have that here in Wausau, but that is something that you still need to think about, finding ways to bring people to town like that. Yep, we've got some great events. You know, when Mung Wausau Fest uh, went on this uh, the end of July, um, the hotel rooms from here to an hour away, they were all filled up. So, you know, we have ways to fill up those, fill up those hotels and really kind of give a boost to the whole region. So we'll, we'll continue looking at that. And obviously I look forward to a fruitful relationship with the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Mm -hmm, indeed. Finally, before we let you go, we'll got to talk about something fun here. You, oh. you and your uh, cohorts in Rhinelander and Stevens Point are getting together. <laughs> oh yeah. And doing an art contest. Yes, we are. Tell us about this. Yeah, so, you know, Fredrickson, uh, Mayor Fredrickson of Rhinelander is kind of a, a self-made painter. Um, and, you know, I didn't know this until I <laughs> I decided this winter that I needed to do some things other than uh, thinking about politics. So I decided to kind of turn my lens to art. And I posted a, posted a picture of a drawing I did. And he was very into it and then said, challenged, both me and Mayor Weasel out of Stevens Point to an art contest. So we've kind of drawn up these terms where we'll have, uh, we'll all present a piece of art and there'll be an auction. Uh, so people will bid on them and then the, the winner decides where those funds go, uh, donated to their favorite charity. Uh, so we're ready. You see, but the, the interesting thing about this is you want to raise a lot of money, Yep. but you don't actually <laughs> want to win. Why is that? Well, yeah, I think I think the winner is the winner the one that gets to choose the charity, or is the winner's charity the one that's the, not chosen? The, win, the winner chooses <laughs> the charity, but it's one of the other two. The yes. winner can't donate the money to the charity that they. Yeah, chosen. so I think Mayor Fredrickson went with Art Start. So you know, we're kind of talking about this. We were going to unveil this during uh, Festival of Arts, which I'm very excited about coming up. But uh, maybe by the time this airs, it's not coming up. Um, <laughs> But I think we're going to give ourselves a little bit of extra time for folks to kind of check it out and, and, and you know, help us so, donate to a good cause. So then for the people that want to see just exactly how artistic or unartistic uh, <laughs> you and Mayor Wiesa and Mayor Fredrickson are, when will they be able to see these pieces? Uh, you know, we're, we're kind of finalizing that. So I will get to you later this week with that date. Okay. <laughs> And, well, and hopefully we can update you on that. We will we'll be looking forward to that. I've <laughs> yes. already seen one, at least... Uh, half completed yes. one. I have not seen yours yet. So mm. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, right. I actually changed my idea halfway through and just kind of restarted it. So <laughs> that's we, what we do. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I've got high expectations. Mm, okay. <laughs> All right, well, Mary Katie, we always appreciate the time. We'll look forward to chatting again next month. Thank you.